In the last couple of videos, we spoke about the Fibonacci function, and we uh, and we mentioned that it actually branches, and many values get recalculated because of the recursion. As you can see here, uh, this figure here demonstrates how the Fibonacci works. That Fibonacci of five uh, goes down to Fibonacci of four, and Fibonacci of three, and Fibonacci of four goes down to fib, fib of three and fib of two. So if you no notice now that this branch here of fib3 is exactly the same as here and because of the of our implementation as we are use, as you saw in the last video all of these branches will be actually calculated so because of the, fu the, f the way the recursion works these values will be recalculated uh, because they, the function will be called more than once on that value now there's actually a technique to avoid such uh, um, unnecessary calculations and this technique is called memoization as you can see here it's not memorization it's memoization and the idea here is to sort of remember uh, uh, remember method calls or function calls that we have done before for the same value ie um, instead of recomputing the same thing again whenever we compute something we store it and then we went whenever we try to compute something else we check our storage if we have the value for that computation, then we, then we retrieve it. If not, then we do the calculation. If you remember my implementation from last time for the Fibonacci function, it looks like this. And I, this time I'm calling it naive Fibonacci because I am actually going through the unnecessary calculations and, and the branches. Yes, I don't avoid them at all. Um, for example, here, fib of 3 would be calculated more than once, fib, fib, fib of 2 last time, and so on and so forth. And if the, if the number is large, then uh, this actually becomes unreasonable, and the number of repeated calculations gets very, very large. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to go to our top loop. Yes, I'm going to declare um, a, a reference variable, if you remember from, from our previous video. So I'm going to say, let c1 for count equals ref say for example let's start at one for example because the function will be called at least once yes now if you notice here if you look at my code what I do is as soon as the function gets called the first thing we do is we increase c1 this um, uh, reference variable here I could have said c1 equals uh, excl exclamation mark the way we actually can actually change the value of a reference variable but increment e I and C are this function here is specifically for uh, increasing and uh, and increasing increasing <coughs> reference variable variables of type integer. Uh, for for decreasing, we can see D E C R decrease that variable anyway. So for every with every call, I'm going to actually increase that variable. Let me copy and paste this code. That's a small comment as you can see. So let me copy and paste this code here. What is complaining? Yes is because these symbols are not what we're looking for so let me copy it with the comment as well copy and paste that and as you can see it's happy now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it with let's say the number 300 it'll take a while so let me actually pause that'd be a large number so let me actually pause here and come back while, one, once it, it has finished. I'm sorry, I need to stop it. It's taking unreasonably long. So let's try it with 30 rather than 300. Yes, uh, that's the value of 30. Now the number of calculations is stored where? Ah, uh, no, I need to actually take C back to zero, C1 back to zero first. I'm sorry, that's my mistake. Let me take to zero first, so C1 is zero now, and then when I call call it 430 now, now if I see the value of C1, then the function was called two million, more than two and a half million times, just to compute the Fibonacci of 30. The function was called more than two and a half million times, 2.69, almost 2.7 million times. Just going back to the tree, that th if you see it for 5 it looks this small but for, for 30 this tree will be huge and the number of uh, repeated calculations calculation for the same value will be very very large so what I can do now is I can use this technique called memoization 
And as I said, we need to remember any value that we compute before so we avoid recomputing it. And the way I'm going to do this is by storing all the calculations that we have. I'm going to save any value that we compute in a data structure and then retrieve it if it's there. If you look at my code here. And the data structure I'm going to use is called hash, a hash table. Now, uh, I've not explained data structures in OCaml, but generally a hash table um, is sort of a data structure that's used to store and retrieve data or records, yes? So it actually uh, it, it consists of buckets using hash keys, and the hash keys usually are calculated by applying hash some hash algorithm. Anyway, don't worry about how it works. The idea here is that we can have a key and a value, a key and a value. So for example, we can save Fibonacci of 30 with this value, Fibonacci of 0, save it as 1, Fibonacci of 1, save it as 1, Fibonacci of 2, and so on and so forth. So, and then we can check if the, if the value is there, then we can retrieve it from the data structure from the hash table rather than having to recalculate it again. That way, we can avoid uh, repeating unnecessary calculations. Now, if you want to see how this works, let me uh, let me declare another counter as a ref int. I know it can be done in another way, but just 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 a simple way to demonstrate how it works. Now, I need to show you my code using memoization. If you keep looking, what I'm going to do here, I just call it memo fib for memoization, and then ev at every Call, the first thing I do is increase the counter I declared now it has a value of 0 and then I match the end with if it's 0 return 0 if it's 1 return 1 if it's any other value then what I do is I check my hash table I'll show you how, how this works in a minute but what this code is doing by the way uh, 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 just in general what this code is doing is we need to check the value of n this variable n here we send in our code if hash table dot mem that means if it's a member of this hash table, I, I, I call my hash table memo as, as I'm going to show you. If n exists in the hash table, then return that value. Find it and return it. So th what this is doing is I'm calling a function called find inside a module hash table. Uh, the hash table is called memo and the key is n. If it's there, then retrieve it. Otherwise, I just do begin and end. I can use the parentheses. And they say hash table dot add. My hash table is called memo. I add n, yes, which is the key, and the value would be the value coming out from the, re the recursive call. So this way, I I store every value I calculate, and then by checking whether that value exists, I avoid actually uh, uh, recalculating it again and return the stored value from the hash table. Yes. Uh, as I said before, I'll explain wh how, what hash tables are and how they work in my coming videos. In fact, I may be doing a full series of data structures in OCaml as a separate tutorial. But anyway, let me copy and paste this. No, in fact, I need to declare my hash, my hash table first. So let me declare a hash table. And the way I do it is like this. If you see my top loop here, please have a look here. Focus that now I'm saying let memo, memo just a variable name, equals hash table, hash tbl.create, and then of size 1. So hash table, this is actually a module in OCaml, and inside it there's a function called create. So now what's a, actually we're actually learning more than one thing at the same time. We're also learning how to call something from inside the module, from inside the sort of... A module is like a library or a package. Yes? So now I, ha I have a hash table called memo, and as you can see, it's uh, um, polymorphic, a key and a value, a key and a value, um, and it's empty at the moment. Um, but I can clear it just to the to show you how this works. So hash table dot clear. That's a function again in inside module hash table. It's called clear, and I pass it the ha the variable name, the hash table name, and it actually clear it. It returns it because it's actually clear. So if I say memo now, it shows me it's actually a hash table and it's actually empty yes now let me copy and paste my code hopefully you still remember how this code works remember we check this mem here is functions of the hash table if the, if the value is there inside the hash table then return the key um, I'm sorry if the key is there which is our number then return the Fibonacci value otherwise calculate it and save it so let me paste the code here quickly I'm sorry and Last time, we computed Fibonacci of number 30, 
you must have noticed now it's actually quicker but we can come to that later maybe but if I show you the value of C2 now remember C1 with the naive implementation was um, almost 2.7 million times almost 2.7 million calculations but now the number of calculations is only 59 believe it or not that's amazing shocking isn't it to reduce the number of calculations from 2.7 million to only 59 calculations using this trick or this technique called memorization. I hope you're finding this useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.